Welcome to City Vibes Metro. I'm your host, Christina Andrianopoulos. Thank you very much for your feedback, your support, and watching my show. Keep it coming. I know you will really enjoy this episode with a great cross-section of guests. My first guest is Mark Ragsdale, who has been in the auto dealership business for practically all his life. A short while ago, he was compelled to write a book called Car Wreck, which was recently published, and tonight he will tell us all about the book and what compelled him to write it. Now I have the great pleasure of introducing Mark Ragsdale. How are you, Mark? I'm great. Hey, thank you so much for having me. Glad to have you here. And recently we spent some time being hosts for a great event, a fundraiser, the Shrewsbury Montessori School. So I got to know you a little bit better. Wasn't that fun? I mean, the Beachwood did a great job and it was all for the kids. We had a it, great evening. Great it evening. It is. It is for the kids. Now, you're here because I learned that you wrote a book called The Car Wreck. Car wreck, how you got rear-ended, run over, and crushed by the U.S. auto industry. Okay, that's very interesting because the auto um, dealer industry was in the limelight for the last year of 2009 and now into the new year. Tell us a little bit about what compelled you to write this book. Well, I sold out by the grace of God in the fourth quarter, just ahead of the fourth quarter of 2008. Uh, I sold out the last of our businesses. Um, I had uh, six auto dealerships, three motorcycle dealerships throughout my career. My father had uh, two dealerships and we had split another one. So my family had been in the business since uh, 1973 in the new automobile business. And um, we just got out in time, you know, uh, just before that big crash when Ford and GM and Chrysler showed up uh, in Washington looking for big bailout money. So that's, so you really know the pulse of what went on with the industry. So you speak from knowledge. So what do you mean by gotten rear-ended and run over and crushed by the U.S. auto industry and probably in a, a short synopsis of what that means. Well, you know, there's, there's rampant um, issues with the finance and the politics and the greed uh, behind the industry. And it's a funny phenomenon. You, anybody that goes to a cookout, you hear these stories and people just kind of get them half right. You know, my brother-in-law worked at a car, car dealership and this is how it goes down. Or if you get it on an airplane, somebody finds out what you do, you start hearing their version of what, and they're about half right. They're about half right. Meaning um, when you buy a car. You're saying when you buy a car, or when you get it financed. Is this what you're talking about, like the layperson like myself walking into a dealership? You talk about that in the book? I, I talk about In fact, I have a, a protagonist couple, the Hill couple, uh, that are trading their car. And it's every step of the way, from the ads that they see on TV to how the banks have treated them in the past, how the dealer treated them in the past, the vehicle they're trading, the vehicle that they're trying to finance now, their credit rating, everything's covered. And then towards the end of the book, we start to get into some of the more uh, political issues around what happened to GM and Chrysler and how the unions influenced uh, your and my finances, actually. Well, wow, that's interesting. Okay, so can you take us a little bit, like I'm in the market for a car coming up, my car, I'm leasing a car, so I'm in the market for that. So why don't you tell me maybe our audience some, some of the pitfalls I can avoid. Is that okay for you? You're the expert now. Is that okay for you to give us <laughs> sure, some advice? Sure, I will try and do it in the short amount of time that we have here. <laughs> okay. Um, first of all, I would say price is important, but it's not the most important thing. Mm -hmm. Like, there are three prices to agree upon. There's a price that you're paying, there's a price that you're getting for your trade-in, and there's a difference between the two. Okay. Number one. So that deals with some of the structure around price. The second issue is, if you're really a great negotiator, if you can negotiate like you're walking through a Moroccan bazaar, yeah. negotiating <laughs> for tents, okay, right. and you can save $1,500, $2,000, God bless you. What I'm concerned about is you registering the car and blowing ten or twelve or fifteen thousand dollars during your first two weeks of ownership, and that's far more common for for uh, people to experience, and they don't even realize it. They don't even realize okay, it. Okay, so when you mean your when you register your car, you're blowing fifteen thousand dollars. What do you mean by that? You can. I cite examples uh, where the automakers have heavily rebated their new car oh. after you buy yours. I cite examples where they make these wild fleet deals and they sell tens of thousands of virtually the same exact car that you bought to fleet and rental companies. Now when these fle fleet and rental companies are done with the car, maybe they've had it eight months, nine months, it's still in the same year that you bought your car. Right. They dump them back on auctions and tens of thousands of these hit the market at once. So guess what happens to your car? What you happens? Know? It depreciates wildly, oh, unpredictably, I see what you're saying. unpredictably. So there's a bunch of different factors and issues that I'm comfortable if you read the book, and it's a quick read, uh, if you read the book, you'll become the master among your friends about the auto industry. You won't have to sit around and theorize 
uh, and speculate. You'll actually know the business virtually as well as I do. Well, I don't mind becoming a master because, you know, I buy a car. I think it's one of my major investments, so it would be good for us to learn. So let's just talk. Let's, can, you, can you catch this book, the color? Okay, so it's called Car Wreck. And it's How You Got Rear-Ended, Run Over, and Crushed by the U.S. Auto Industry by Mark Ragsdale, who we have right here. Your signature outfit is with your hat. I like your hat as well. So that's great. And well, my family comes from Missouri. I have an excuse. I oh. spent an awful <laughs> lot of time in Missouri as a kid, and I never really gave it up. So I oh, have that's great. So you have it My in. wife doesn't like that excuse, but that's, that's what I'm sticking to it. I'm a car dealer. You can trust me. I'm sticking to that story. Oh, that's great. Okay. And so now... Should we, when we, we go to a car dealer, should we, I mean, I know someone who is the general manager of a car dealer. Is that who I should go to because he's going to probably be more honest with me or fair with me? He probably has more authority. He probably has more authority. The sales manager has more authority than a sales consultant. Some, some car dealers structure their sales process so the sales consultants have authority. Yeah. Um, you'll generally find that out if you say, okay, well, I want to think about it. Thank you. Thank you for the numbers. I want to go think about it. And then if you happen to see somebody else stroll over to the desk, that's the person that has a superior level of authority generally. Oh, I see what you're saying. Now, if you're going to buy a car um, and somebody gives you information, would you suggest they go home and think about it and then come back or make a decision right away? Or you, you don't know? need to. If you go into the situation knowing where you need to end up, then right. it's fine. Okay. You can make that decision. But, uh, you know, like we talked about, the three levels of price. Right. The price of what I'm buying, the price of what mine is worth, and the difference between the two. Mm -hmm. There's also another factor. There is what you owe on your vehicle. I see. Okay? A lot of times people, and according to Edmunds.com, before this crash now, because the crash has changed a few things, right. um, people owed an average of $4,700 more in their car than what it was worth. So now if you roll, when I talk about roll, right. you take the 4700 and you... Oh, well, we'll just put it in the new finance right. contract. In, in certain cases, the debt, the payment obligation every month on that old number can almost be as much as the payment obligation on the one that you just purchased. Amazing. I mean, there's so much you have to... I'm, I am going to read it. I didn't read it yet. but And people can buy it at, at any of the bookstores? You go to markragsdale.com because then... It. My publisher says I make more money. That would be great. Uh, if, <laughs> okay. Or you can go to Amazon.com. Okay, great. Or you can go to Barnes & Noble. Or you can go to Borders. And I'm just happy. If, look, this is to set people free. Good. Okay? I am now the bridge builder between what car dealers need to satisfy mm -hmm. you and what you need to be okay. You end up paying too much, and the car dealer doesn't make enough. So there's a problem with the system. Right. And that arms you now. You know where you need to end up. So okay. if you show up in the dealership the first day... With you the can, book. You can make a deal. <laughs> well, show. Review it at least. First. Okay, good. Well, thanks, Mark, so much. And say hi to your lovely wife, Lori. Thank you. Thank you for Thank being here. Thank you so here. much. We'll be right back. That was good.